Aircraft can be powered by storing energy in many different forms, whether it be liquid fuel for a jet or piston engine, or in a battery for powering an electric motor. But what about flywheel energy storage? Flywheels can be used to store huge amounts of energy by rotating a mass at really high RPM. But is this enough to fly a plane? Let's build a flywheel and find out. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. More on them later. Now you might be able to notice that I'm actually CNC cutting carbon fibre underneath that water. But aren't flywheels meant to be heavy? Well, yes and no. You see, the energy stored in a flywheel is essentially kinetic energy, which is the energy of a mass moving at a given speed. The equation for this flywheel energy is half times the rotational inertia times the angular velocity squared. The rotational inertia is related to the mass of the flywheel and how far that mass is away from the rotational axle. And the angular velocity is how fast the wheel is spinning. Now we can increase the energy stored by increasing both of these values. However, because the velocity is squared, we're much better off spinning the flywheel faster. By doubling the inertia, we will double the energy. But by doubling the velocity, we will quadruple the energy. And as we need to keep the weight as low as possible whilst keeping the energy storage high, we need to have a lightweight flywheel that will spin at really high RPM. And we want as much of that flywheel mass to be as far from the axle as possible. Hence the lightweight carbon fibre hub and aluminium outer ring. I then balanced it as best as I could and assembled it with a belt and pulley system, resulting in a propeller to flywheel ratio of 16 to 1. So the flywheel can spin really fast while keeping the propeller RPM relatively low. The rotational from the pulleys is then transferred through these bevel gears to spin the propeller at the front. In fact, I'm able to spin the propeller with my finger at about two revolutions per second, which is about 2000 RPM at the flywheel. I then attached a tail boom with a rudder and elevator to control it in flight and built a launch ramp which has a motor to spin up the flywheel. It sounds okay at low RPM, but as it gets faster it starts to sound really rough. Which at the time was a little confusing, as I had balanced the flywheel and pulleys better than I usually balance my drone propellers, which spin at far higher RPM. But I did notice this o-ring expanding and shaking, which I think is causing most of the noise. Plus I think this also caused the belts to vibrate at high RPMs too. At least there was quite a bit of energy stored in the flywheel, allowing it to spin for quite a while. I still had the same foam wing from my old compressed air powered plane and stripped yes. all the tape from the surface, which managed to save about 40 grams and was the perfect size for this plane too. Also, I was concerned about the belt vibrations at high RPM, so printed this ridiculous looking 40 centimeter diameter three bladed propeller to make use of the low RPM output. Right, so I've come out on a nice calm morning. There's virtually no wind. Uh, the sun's just about to come through the clouds and we're gonna give this thing a test. Okay, here we go. I've got to spin it up slowly to start. Just get the motor going. Not quite fast enough. I think it just needs some weight on the actual uh, plane to keep it attached to the uh, the rubber o-ring. Three, two, one. So that wasn't great. Obviously it hit the ground, but I think I need to go print some new gears as well. Seem to have taken out all the teeth on that bevel gear. I think the belts look okay. Just that one gear that I need to reprint. Reprinting the bevel gears took about an hour and a half. So I decided to test the launch ramp a few times whilst I waited and got mixed results. All right, so I've come back about two hours later. I've repaired all of the 3D printed gears um, and I really don't want to risk breaking them again because how long it takes to reprint them and refit them. So instead of risking the gears this time, I'm going to risk myself. I'm going to hand launch this thing. <laughs> Going to be a lot harder than I first imagined. Another two hours later I went back to a 15 inch carbon fibre propeller and decided to test from the launch ramp again but it was still very far from performing a successful flight. I tested a couple more times from a higher launch position and even removed one of the pulley stages to increase the rpm of the propeller relative to the flywheel. And even after removing all of the electronics to reduce the weight further it still wasn't flying. So I decided to cut my losses, but I needed to see a plane fly using just the energy stored in a flywheel. Sometimes the simplest ideas work the best, 
and I think I've found a solution to my flywheel madness. This toy uses the rotational energy of the propeller and its outer ring to continue rotating after I apply force to the string, creating a thrust force lifting it up into the air. But what I love most about these toys is a super simple yet effective release mechanism. Here's a 3D printed version I built to attach to a brushless drone motor. The way it works is these angled parts interlock, meaning the propeller is held down if it's being accelerated by the motor. Then once the motor decelerates, it unlocks and shoots into the sky. But is it enough to power a plane? Well, moving ahead with a simple solution, I needed a simple plane. So I built this very basic glider using balsa wood and foam board, and attached a bearing block to the front, which will allow the propeller to freely rotate. It's so satisfying seeing something so simple work so well. Also, it's really easy to modify the weight, diameter and pitch of the propeller for different flight performance. Though, don't try to save too much weight on the blades which hold it all together. Unless you want a flying hula hoop. This release mechanism works really well for being so simple. It just requires the motor to decelerate and let the plane soar into the sky. I will be putting the files to this flywheel plane up on Thingiverse if you want to build your own. However, make sure to use a radio control to spin up the motor and stand at a safe distance. And be careful of any flying shrapnel. Speaking of keeping things simple, if you're like me and find it difficult to sit down and read books to learn new things, especially when a video like this pops up in your YouTube subscription feed, then the sponsor of this video will be of interest to you. Blinkist is an app for those of you interested in learning from books, but just don't have the time. They take key insights from over 3,000 non-fiction bestsellers in over 27 categories. As you may know from my YouTube videos, I make projects relating to all sorts of areas of engineering and I tend to read very lightly into each topic just to get a general understanding so that I can make a video like this for you guys to watch. And this is exactly what Blinkist does, but for books. I highly recommend checking out the Wright Brothers book as it covers the history of the brothers whilst they pioneered new inventions in aviation. And to summarize such an interesting historical story in just 15 minutes is really enjoyable. Another great one is Rocket Men, which is all about the space race and Apollo missions to the moon. And both these books can be listened to in just 30 minutes and being 15 minutes each, they're perfect to enjoy while sipping on a cup of tea. So the first 100 people that sign up via blinkist.com forward slash Tom Stanton will get a seven day unlimited access free trial. And you will also get 25% off a four year membership. This means that you can read a book every day for the next week. In what other world does that exist? I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my channel and want to see other crazy projects similar to this, please click subscribe down below. And a huge, huge thanks to all of my supporters over on patreon.com. You guys make these videos possible and I honestly couldn't do it without you. So thanks once again. Thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.